Hey guys, welcome back to Mikey's American Dream. For those of you who are new to the channel, this is the channel where well, we moved to Texas about three months ago. It has flown by um, and we're having an amazing time. I literally just got in from the airport today. So for the, anyway, for those of you who want to see more of what it was like for two Brits to move to the US, to move to Texas specifically, our experiences, what we're getting up to, how life is and why we moved, this is the channel for you to check us out. Subscribe to the channel. You can go through the backlog of all the videos, we, all the videos we've made. I think it's like 40, close to 50 now. Uh, you can have a look and see what we've been up to, see why we moved, what was the purpose of moving. But we are anyway so happy to be here. Things are going amazingly. And if you want to have more conversations like this one and you want to hear more of my thoughts and my opinions just like this one, follow me on Patreon. The link is down below in the description. Hit that link. It's a seven day free trial, it's just five dollars per month after that. You can cancel any time. You can cancel before the seven day period expires, so you haven't got to pay a penny. Check it out. Um, I haven't been posting regularly for the last 10 days or so because I've been away, but regular posts are coming now. So, Patreon is definitely, if you want to hear my thoughts on politics, on history, on everything that's happening now economically, Patreon is the place for you to be. So, check me out there. When I landed in Texas today, I have to tell you, like, it's a re really weird feeling, like I'm home. Um, I didn't feel like I was home when I was in the UK. Um, it was just relief. It was absolute relief just to be here. I'll make a separate video about that. Um, well, no, actually, let's talk about it today. So first of all, like this video, subscribe to the channel. I just wanted to let you know that it was such a weird thing. So spent a couple of days total in the UK, really didn't do much. And then we were in Cyprus uh, because we we're planning our wedding. Um, now, the reason we had to go and talk to so many people was because we had some issues with our wedding, mainly down to our wedding planner. Now that is going to be a video, a separate video for a different day, maybe with Tasha. Uh, maybe I'll film it tomorrow, who knows. But now that it's all sorted and it's all finished and booked and we're good to go, essentially, um, we're able to talk about it. It was stressful, it's all fixed now, but there is so much to talk about. Uh, and actually, now we can name the company that actually messed us around and it'll be really, really great to get it out there. So, yeah, that'll be a video for a separate day. But for the purpose of this video, I just wanted to let you know how I felt about my trip to, uh, to the UK and Cyprus. Now, Cyprus is my ancestral homeland, right? Uh, I'm ethnically Greek Cypriot. I don't know if you can tell by my olive complexion and my dark beard or whatever it is. But sometimes I do get a bit of ginger here. If you, anyway, you can't really see. But um, I, I love Cyprus, I always will. But there are some things that I've noticed. There are definitely things about Cyprus, small things that are maybe better than the US, but by and large, those are things that you can find really on any small island or in any small European country. And that is just a slower way of living. Um, but those are so overshadowed to me by everything else that we have here in the United States. And honestly, the biggest thing for me was when, I, when we landed in the US, I thought, oh, I'm home. And then we started driving through Katy and I started seeing everything and I got home. It's like, I feel like this is 100% home and I feel more comfortable here than I ever did in the UK. Like just small, just small things like the weather or, you know, things that got to me, like when we were in Cyprus, everyone had these small little shitty cars. I know it sounds wrong, but you know, like these small little two cylinder or three cylinder Nissans that, you know, have like 30 brake horsepower and it's just, I'm like, oh, I'm so happy to be here and I can get in my gas guzzling Ford and I don't have to worry about high fuel prices. I can just, everything here is, you know, is, is perfect for me. And I was just so happy, beyond happy to be home. I'm beyond happy to be home. Now, I'm going into work early tomorrow morning after all these long flights. I'm not even like, most people will be upset by having to go to work after a vacation, you know? But, and this wasn't a vacation, this was purely, you know, sorting out wedding stuff and and all that stuff, but I'm not even upset about it, I'm just happy to be back. Uh, that is not to say, I had the most amazing time in Cyprus with my fiance and my future parents-in-law, we had the amazing time. My uh, future father-in-law 
uh, is really, really into archaeology as well, and like, ain't, um, you know, uh, crusaders, like the crusades and uh, like that part of history as well, and also like ancient history as well. Very much like my own father, who's massively into that. And in fact, my sister is studying ancient history and archaeology at university. So I think um, I've surrounded myself with these people that have similar interests. Pretty much everything I read has some historical value. I don't really read any fiction. I only read his, um, his, history. And then actually, I started to get into reading some psychology as well uh, through Jordan Peterson and others and such. But we, you're going you're gonna to see some videos up on here in the next few days. I've got like hundreds of hours of footage to whittle down into a few videos, you know, to get like a nice viewing experience. We went to like the Tomb of the Kings. We're into some, like old ancient civilization cages, uh, caves, not cages. Um, we're into like old archaeological sites where the first settlements, the first Greek and Byzantine settlements were on Cyprus. Um, and I've got so much footage of, you know, where, of all these places that we visited, so much great footage of me and Sean um, on here. So that's gonna be coming in a few days and I'm really, really excited about that. What I'll do is, the next video, I'll do an explanation of why we we're in Cyprus, what happened with the wedding planner and all that stuff. And then I'll start posting some of the vlog stuff that we got up to over the last uh, seven days or so, because actually we had a great time. Um, some of the time, because we were so busy with meetings and stuff like that, I forgot to vlog certain bits and pieces, but most of the archeological stuff and the, the exploring that we got up to, uh, we got, I only wish I brought my cowboy hat, uh, so I could have felt like Indiana Jones because it really did feel like old Indiana Jones half that time. Um, <laughs> an interesting story. I actually wanted to be an archaeologist, archaeologist as a child uh, because of Indiana Jones. Um, you know, when you're a kid, right? And then I grew up and I realized that's not really what archaeologists do. And I kind of went off the idea. But my sister actually ended up wanting to be an ancient histori historian and an archaeologist. I went down the the boring, I wouldn't say boring, but the generic route of uh, going to college and then going to law school and becoming a qualified lawyer in uh, England, Wales and Europe and then not using the degree one bit. Um, I'm still very grateful that I did that degree. It opened my mind up. Uh, it made me able to put an argument across, put a point across, and that really helps me in my current work it helped me be able to write reports and, and really formulate arguments, which is, I think is great for anyone uh, in any job, really. So I'm super grateful for that high level of education that I received. Um, and I, I wanna say grateful, I, I believe in being grateful, but it was also something I worked really hard for. So I was, I was studying whilst I was working full time. I did it over like a course of six years. So it was like, you know, but it was super intense. Like I was sleeping like for like six years, I was sleeping like five hours a night. And I thought once I'm finished with college, I'll start sleeping more. And now Tasha will te uh, testify to the fact that I still sleep for five hours a night sometimes. And then on a Saturday morning, I'll sleep uh, until like 10, that's my line. Um, it's not healthy. Um, it really isn't. I need to start sleeping more and I'm definitely adjusting my schedule to be able to do that. And I'm not spreading myself too thinly. I've just really like, not highly strung. Um, I'm really get up and go with work, uh, with re really any work. I feel like if I'm not working, I'm not really doing anything. And some people will think of that as a waste of time or like you're wasting your life away. But actually I enjoy really every minute of it. So it's not, you have to do something with your day, right? You can't laze around and watch TV and eat Cheetos in front of the sofa. Um, so why not do something that is a fulfilling, during that time and also sets you up really well for the future and like i've always said i'm not really looking out for my future at this point i'm not saying my cards are laid out and i can't change them um and i'm not saying i don't believe that i can't be a billionaire but i'm not going to be a billionaire in my lifetime um maybe my kids won't be billionaires that's fine but they, they could be millionaires and, and i know money isn't everything but money definitely eliminates um i'm going off on a tangent here but money definitely eliminates um, some stresses, Everyone, we're always going to have stresses, uh, family stresses and, you know, um, you know, touch wood it never happens to any, any of us, but you know, illnesses and stuff like that. And having money, um, can mitigate some of those stresses. So, and it's also for me though, it's more a, 
a signifier of work put in. I feel very much so that the work that I do, um, I get directly, I directly benefit from the more work I put in and the harder work I do. Um, so I think that's definitely the cost benefit analysis for me is that, and I just enjoy it. It's just, I have an absolute great time at work. Um, so I don't feel like it's work. Anyway, that's, that's a tangent. Um, and there you have some of my beliefs about money and, and, and um, you know, I, the, you have to, I have to, you know, constantly weigh up between living simply and, and trying to achieve as, as, as absolutely, as much as, as humanly possible with the cards I have. Um, because I don't believe that there are limiting factors um, that there are of course limiting factors, but I don't believe that we can't do our best to overcome them. Anyway, so, and there you are, and that's why I moved to the United States and Texas, um, because I believe that if there's any country in the world where one can supersede the, the limiting factors with, with which they have been born or, or, or raised into, it is this country right here, because there is such a huge, Wealth of opportunity, opportunity that I didn't see in the UK, in um, in Cyprus, in Europe in general. And, and by the way, the UK is finished. I just I, I got caught up on some news whilst I was out in the UK. They're going to raise water bills, water bills by forty percent, so they can build some new infrastructure. That's because it's government subsidised. It's not as private as it should be. Uh, people are waiting like a year for a doctor's appointment because the NHS is overrun. Um, and then you you add. All of that onto the fact that there's rising gas prices, just to put it into perspective, it's like $8 a gallon in the UK, and that's like good, right? So it cost me, as I, my old car that now my mother drives is like a 2013 Ford Fiesta EcoBoost. It costs more to fill that car up and to run that car than it does my 2021 Ford Explorer, my turbocharged Ford Explorer, Ford Explorer um, truck. It's, it's, it's an SUV, right? It costs more to, you know, in the UK to have a Ford Fiesta than it does that. And, and, you know, it's just, it's, it blows my mind. I'm so happy to be here. Um, you can probably see that I'm super happy to be here. So um, I'm happy to be back. Uh, I'm happy with, I'm grateful for everything I have right now. And, and, and that's, that's the point, is that there is so much more opportunity for people who work here in the US to build wealth, to create a good life for themselves, to be able to look after their families and their loved ones and, and, and progress and uh, elevate themselves into a happier kind of life uh, than there is in the UK. And then you, in the UK, you add on top of that the miserable weather that they have almost constantly. Um, I mean, I was there, it's, it was seven degrees Celsius, so like, like 45 degrees Fahrenheit and it's like April now. So it, that's just, that just, that's just crazy for me. Um, I know you get that up north here in, in the US as well, but uh, like I, I consider myself uh, moving towards being a full-time Texan. <laughs> so if I'm not considered that already, but uh, and I just stepped off the plane and I felt the warmth and the touch of humidity. I was like, oh, it's just, just so much better. It's just, I, I'm not, I don't have seasonal depressive disorder or whatever it is, um, but we're all happier when it's warmer and sunny, right? Um, so you add, you know, the rising gas prices, the water, the, the rising uh, water prices, the lack of healthcare, and then you add the rain, the cold, the gloominess and the clouds to that equation. You're like, why, why even be there? And then you have the fact that you, you get charged just to drive your car. It, blows my mind anyway so that's it for me guys I just got back to the US just got back home and you know I was wondering how long it would take before this start to feel like home home like really home uh, and uh, it's obviously already happened because I just felt so relaxed and comfortable and happy to be back uh, and I have no intention of going back to the UK uh, if I don't need to um, right now and let's see I, I would much rather instead of me buying flights for me to go to the UK, I'd much rather pay money for my family to come here and visit me here in the US. That's just the way I wanna go about it from now on. So thank you very much guys, don't forget, 
If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you wanna have more conversations like this one, and you wanna hear more of my thoughts and my opinions just like this one, follow me on Patreon. The link is down below in the description. Hit that link. It's a seven day free trial, it's just $5 per month after that. You can cancel any time. You can cancel before the seven day period expires so you haven't got to pay a penny. Check it out. Um, I haven't been posting regularly for the last 10 days or so because I've been away, but regular posts are coming now. So Patreon is definitely, if you want to hear my thoughts on politics, on history, on everything that's happening now economically, Patreon is the place for you to be. So check me out there. I'm going to cut this into the beginning as well. So. Uh, check me out on Patreon. Thank you very much guys. Don't forget like subscribe hit the notification bell So you don't miss out on any new videos and I'll see you on the next video guys